This is a video on how to use the distribution function on a TI-84 plus CE. This will be similar for most TI-84s and TI-83s. There's a slight difference if you have a different operating system, which I will also discuss. Okay, so here we have the example. We want to find the p-value and draw a sketch of the p-value area. So we're talking about hypothesis testing. Um, we're doing a T, we're doing T testing instead of Z testing, but using, uh, finding the value for a Z score is similar. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to look here, then we want to ask ourselves, do we have a one tail or a two tail test? So we're going to go to the alternative hypothesis. This is a one tail, and we know that our T score is negative 1.75, and we know that we have degrees of freedom of 14. So we're going to make a sketch of this, and remember that your T, your student T has, I usually draw it like this to tell myself it's a student T instead of a normal curve, just to note, hey, there's a little bit of extra um, area floating out at the ends out there. So just like the standard normal curve, T distribution, student T's are um, set at zero. I'm going to tell myself degrees of freedom is equal to 14, and here's one, two, three, and four, negative one, negative two, negative three, and negative four. Okay, not only is it a one tail, but since it's less than, oh, and these shouldn't be x bars. These really ought to be mu's. How embarrassing. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, so one tail, and since we're saying, we're hypothesizing that it's less than, uh, that means that we know we want to go in this direction, so this is a left tail. Oops. All right, so we're going to plot our um, negative 1.75, so that's about here. So T is negative 1.75. And now we're going to fill in that area. Just so, so, just so that when we get the picture, we have a general sense that the number we get out of the calculator is correct. So I can see that I am looking for a number smaller than 50%. So I know that my p-value ought to be less than 50%. Again, the p-value is that shaded in area right there. So the and so where we want to go in our calculator is we want to go to here to distribution. So you're going to look for the button that says D-I-S-T-R for distribution. So you're going to hit second distribution. And we're on um, the T. And so we're going to look for the, um, the uh, T PDF. So I'm going to put in the value I'm looking for. So negative 1.75, and the degrees of freedom are 14. I'm going to hit Enter. And so if you don't have, let me clear that out, that nice little T, oops, sorry, not PDF, TCDF. Sorry, I'm going to hit the TCDF. If you don't have this lovely little prompt window that I have, what you're going to end up with is your you're going to end up with something that looks like this, T, C, D, F, comma, or parenthesis. And it's going to ask you what you're looking for. It's just going to have a blank, blanky thing like that. It's going to look for the lower bound, the upper bound, the degrees of freedom, and that's it. That's all that it wants from you. It wants to know what lower bound are you going to, to what upper bound are you going to, and degree, degrees of freedom. Basically, between what two numbers are you looking for the area, and which T distribution are you in, which is the degrees of freedom. Um, now, I'm just trying to do a whole one tail, and so you notice what I'd like to do is I'd like to go from negative infinity all the way up to negative 1.75. That's what I would like to do in my calculator. Well, your calculator can't go all the way to negative infinity, but what it can do is essentially negative infinity. 
I'm going to say negative 1 for negative infinity and make sure that you're pressing the negative and not the minus. If you accidentally press minus when you go to, it's going to say syntax error. So if you get a syntax error, first thing that you should do is say, did I accidentally type minus instead of negative? Um, also look for, did I just put things, maybe I switched my upper and lower bounds. It doesn't like that. I think that might be error dimension when you do that, though. All right. And now I want to tell it with 99 zeros afterwards. And that essentially is big enough that um, you'll get to basically infinity, but small enough that your calculator can physically handle it. So the way that we do this is we say 10 to the 99. And the way that your calculator deals with that is this button right here with those big double E's. So we're going to hit second, double E, and this is scientific notation, for, or calculator scientific notation. So for 10 to the, and now you're going to tell it what power of 10 you want, and that's going to be 99. So this is going to be negative infinity. If I had wanted positive infinity, I would have put 1 e to the 99. Clear that out. But I don't. I want to go up to negative 1.75. And I'm making sure that my upper and lower bound agree with a number line. Here I have 14 degrees of freedom, and I'm going to paste and hit enter. And I'll see that my p-value in this case is 0 0.05. I'll round that to 1. Okay, and that's all that there is for this. Um, I will make a second video for uh, using the normal district. Oh, so if you hadn't had it, what you would have, sorry, if you hadn't had that prompt screen, what you would have had is this. And it would have looked exactly like this. So again, it wants you to put in the lower bound, the upper bound, the degrees of freedom. So again, it'd be 1 e to the 99. But now you need to remember to put in that comma. Here's the comma right here. It's the same button as the e. How convenient. Negative 1.75. There's my upper bound comma. It's a t distribution, so it needs the degrees of freedom. And we'll hit enter. And that's all that there is to it.